Continuous anthropological insights are valuable teaching resources for health promotion, disease prevention, and strengthening of health systems. To throw more light on this, I'm now joined on set by Professor Kum Awa, a medical anthropologist and a lecturer at the University of Yaoundé. One, hello, Prof, and welcome to the program. Uh, thank you for inviting me to CRTV News. You're welcome. So, medical anthropologists have contributed substantially to understanding the impacts of pandemics, epidemics on the uh, and their effects on social and economic life and their toll on health services and uh, workers. How important is this field in a time like this? First of all, uh, anthropology is the science that deals with human beings, that's human cultures. And culture simply is what human societies create to enable them solve the problems. And secondly, uh, human uh, cultures are created to enable human beings to survive. If you move from those two definitions, simple definitions of anthropology, you understand that everything that human beings do is culture and it is anthropology. And now they are asking them to change the way they behave, their normal routine. What are the fears, the stigma, and the way forward for a situation like this? Uh, well, stigma would, is de being developed in the process of people interacting. Given that when, just from the fact that you have to isolate yourself, you are already discriminating yourself from the society. From the fact that you don't have any contact with any person is already providing um, a platform for stigma. So people, not to talk of when you get infected with coronavirus, you are stigmatized already. Where you live is equally stigmatized, like the hotels that are where the hotels and the hospital units where people um, have been kept, quarantined to confined, uh, stigmatized environment. So um, it would develop like that with time, but at one moment, when people forget about the disease, it will gradually keep, go away. Now let's look at how China helped or contained the virus and how we are in Africa, especially in Cameroon. Cultural differences and uh, ideas of care, do you think is influencing the way the communication of prevention is being uh, done now? First of all, you have to understand that China was prepared. You know, there's what in disease uh, prevention, is what they call preparedness. You have to prepare for any eventuality. So China, f from outbreaks of other uh, disease, flu, um, avian flu, SARS, they already took measures to prepare. But then you cannot prepare enough because you don't know the magnitude of the next disease that is coming. So that is what helped China. And China, they use alternative medicine. They apply biomedicine to your life, to their health system, and they also apply their native or ethno medicine, the medicine which is Chi what is called Chinese medicine. So they use everything, they do everything to make sure that somebody is well. But you see, in societies where you have just one approach, it makes it very difficult very very difficult and that is uh, when you come to Cameroon people are already people it's not like people are not responding people are responding using the locally available um, medicines or what they think is medicine to, to treat themselves but there is no treatment COVID-19 cannot be, be, be treated there is no treatment for it there is no cure for there's no cure there's no cure for it but there there's treatment for it just the bare fact that you are confined to your home is the beginning of treatment. Just the mere fact that they ask you to feed very well is another way of treatment. Just the mere fact that people go in for a lot of fruits, eh, drink a lot of water, isolate themselves, quarantine themselves, that is treatment. But if there's no, because cure, it has no cure. Whatever is being done now is what they call clinical trials, yeah. which are just at the beginning. It will take some time for it to be accepted. Those trials we tried on a few subjects, first of all on animals, then on a few subjects, but it's what they call trials for humanitarian purposes, which is 
they will take a drug that already exists during the trial, just like they talk about chloroquine now and mm -hmm. uh, other associated uh, medicines that can go with it. But you see us with the pressure that is on all nations and uh, 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 medical medics to come up with a, a treatment. Do you think we are going to have any, any, any time soon there will be a vaccine? Yes, there is no disease that will not have treatment. Treatment will be in various stages because there is always the fear of side effects that it should not cause other problems. Why you are being why, like why chloroquine you are treating that has the side effects issues with the heart, heart. With the heart. So uh, that is why it has to take some time. That is why they will always try it on animals first because human beings are priority and losing one human life is too much. So they will try it first on animals. If it works and they cancel the side effects, then they bring it and call it stage one on human beings. Then they go to stage two until they are very sure that the drugs are effective at stage three. Then from there now, they're going into another stage, which, is, which they call stage four, which is to take a drug, an existing drug, and try for another purpose, just like what they're doing for, uh, chloro uh, for chloroquine okay. now. Yes. So, Prof, to you, what are the structural weaknesses that COVID-19 is illuminating in our continent? The structural weakness is that our health systems are fragile. That is the first thing. Because the health systems are fragile, um, we don't have prepared plans. In 20, 2014, uh, when Ebola challenged us, challenged the world, yeah. scientists in Africa, including me and a few other Cameroonians, we formed a group where we were going to intervene and make sure that in case of another epidemic, which was not Ebola, because we knew another epidemic will come up and very soon. We formed a group where we could preempt, and that is why Nigeria has fewer cases, because the head of the group is in Nigeria, and he is there, he is the commissioner of health in Lagos State, in Cameroon, for example. Well, we had a preparedness plan, but we didn't take enough measures to make sure it's like we were expecting another Ebola will come, or if it comes, it will stay away from us, like Ebola never crossed into the Cameroon yeah. territory. So that was our expectation. So we were taken unaware. We didn't see it coming. We thought, well, it's for somebody else. But now that it is in our, right at our doorsteps, it's not too late. We have hope that if the right people are brought on board to use the prepared plan which is there, and if the state can make Available resources, fortunately, Parliament and Senate are sitting now. They can now review the budget and slot in a trust fund just to finance it. But then people have to trust you to, find, to, 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 to contribute to it. If we are able to make available funds for elections that just finish, then we can be able to make funds available for a pandemic like coronavirus at this time. Okay, so if you were to talk about a collaboration between physicians and uh, researchers and uh, tradi practitioners, how, how, how is it going to, how is the, the, the work going to go about? Uh, COVID-19 is not f for one person. It should be teamwork. Teamwork with scientists, medics, basic scientists, clinical scientists, anthropologists, sociologists, psychology, economists, because our economy is going to, you know, we may go back bankrupt. Then the community, because those are the end users of whatever we have to do. They must be part of it. And you see, anthropologists usually are interested on what language they use mm -hmm. to call a disease. And that language, the way they call a disease determines whether they will accept whatever measures that are taken to help them. It is not everything, because we should come out with strategies, measures that the communities will accept. And to make that available, they must be involved in taking decisions about what has to be done, done for them. Now, for people who are not taking this seriously, what do you have to say to them? I would say that they should accept at every time in human society, if we step back to our, a few years back, a few decades back, there were epidemics. 
We never had a robust health, health system, a global health system like we have now, where everybody will run around to help the other one. But we had ways of solving our problems. They should accept that there is an epidemic, and they should accept that they should not greet, salute, that they should, they should not shake somebody's hand. You know, Shaking somebody's hand had never been part of African culture. Africans never used to shake hands. You stand and look at somebody, you talk to him. If he's an elder, he greets you. He's the one to greet you. If it, you are a junior person, you stand and you wait. You give even a distance. When they talk about social distances, yeah. people never used to hug. Let's step back into our, the cultures who have dropped, what we will call our traditions that we have dropped, and integrated other cultures. You will find out that we are going to solve this problem. When diseases occurred in the near past, people were asked to stay at home so that those who were specialized in uh, solving that particular, that particular epidemic, they stayed out to face it because it was taken as witchcraft, it was taken as uh, witches coming to attack the villages or communities. So everything was done. They kept people at home for as long as they were tackling the problem. And then when they were done, they would perform rituals and say, come out. So it is very simple. If you are asked to come out when it is very necessary, come out when it's necessary. Stay at home and you watch from home. When it will be time for the government to say, or the specialists to come back and say, please, we are done with it. Coronavirus is gone. Then we can move out and still enjoy our life. Two weeks that they say stay at home and don't come out is enough to send coronavirus packing. It's an opportunity for us, but if we miss this opportunity, then we'll face the storm, and that will not be too far from now. Thank you very much, Prof. I want to remind our audience that you are a professor at the University of Yaounde One and a medical Thank anthropologist. Thanks for your insights, and we hope to have you for more programs on CRTV. Glad you are welcome. Well, we'll take a short break, and then we'll be back. <laughs>